Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jade and today I am doing my July book haul. I just went to the flea market today and got uh, quite a few books and then I thought about all the other books that I've actually gotten this month and decided that it'd be a good idea to do a book haul. So let's just get into it. I got a lot of books at half price books which is like the first category we're going to look at today. And so one of them is Fairy and Folk Tales of Ireland, edited by W.B. Yeats, and it is this beautiful, beautiful book. And I'm really into, like, folk tales and mythology and fairies and everything, so I really wanted this book. There are, like, some kind of, like, interesting, like, drawings in here and stuff, and it's brand new and beautiful, and I'm in love with it. And I can't wait to start reading it yet. I haven't read any which I really need to fix. We're going to have to start doing that soon. So the next book I got is The Amazons, Women, Warriors, and Myth and History by Lynn Webster Wilde because I feel like I really don't know a lot about the Amazons and Greek mythology is my favorite subject ever. So when I saw this, I totally had to get it and it has like a little section of like artifacts and like stuff like that. So that's really interesting. And then I got a book of... Chinese myths, um, and then the editor is Jake Jackson. Uh, this is a like myth area that I have never read into before, so I thought it'd be super interesting to learn about Chinese myths. I'm super into learning about Japanese myths too, but they didn't have any books there. So then I also got Indian myths, also by Jake Jackson, and I think these will all be like really good. They're definitely from the same publishers as the Amazons, and they just all look like really awesome books. And when I was checking them out, um, they're not from the same, same publishers. They just look very similar, my bad. But when I was checking them out, um, the guy was like, oh, some of these are classics. Like, and he was talking about, like, the, um, the Amazon book and things like that as being classics. So then I also got the Ultimate Guide to Myth, the Ultimate Encyclopedia of Mythology, which is amazing. It's so heavy. It's really dense and it has mythologies from all over the world and just little snippets into them and I'm super interested in reading this. I really should start reading it actually right now. Like I, I'm going to start doing that at some point today. I need to. And then because I'm really into learning about like fairies lately for some reason, I just think like that's such an interesting thing to write about and I wanted to see kind of like, um, not like a YA version of it, but just like something like this which is Enchantment of the Fae Realm, of the Fairy Realm, which is, it's like how to communicate with nature and elemental spirits by Ted Andrews. So it's like a realistic book of like how to actually communicate with fairies. But I thought it'd be interesting because I know I can learn a lot about like the different types of fairies and things like that in here. And it's also a really, really gorgeous book. So I'm super excited about that. And then I got two books involving tarot cards. As I've kind of mentioned slightly in the past, I'm super into tarot cards. So I got How to Use Your Deck of a Thousand Spreads. Just because it gave like a lot of really different spread ideas, I find a lot on the internet and I just go with what feels natural to me, but I thought it'd be interesting to see like what other people think. And then I got this book, which is the Mythic Tarot. Tarot. I don't know. When I look at the word tarot, it's just spelled weird, but... A new approach to the tarot cards. So this is interesting. I read this because I was doing a reading and I was going to use it like this book to understand it. And it's beautiful. It has like really soft silky pages that are awesome. But so what it does is it tells a myth of like the gods. So the judgment card is relates to Hermes. So it tells like myths involving Hermes and things like that. So it's really weird. And I should probably read more into it, but it's definitely an interesting approach, and I'm really interested in it. And then, the, okay, so I got this book earlier in the month, and this is why I started getting into fairies, because I thought this book was beautiful in, like, a really old way, and I wanted to get more like it, because this book's very hard to read. It was obviously written by, like, a scholar, not for normal people, which is really weird, but whatever. So this is The World Guide to Gnomes, Fairies, and Elves, and Other Little People by Thomas Knightley. It's really cool, and I really want to get into it, but it's super hard to read. It's like I need a dictionary to read it, which is just unfortunate. But I am actually, like, a little ways into it. I'm on page 11, but I also read, like, the foreword and things like that, so 
it's interesting though and then I have one more weird like um not I have one more like non-fiction books kind of I guess um that's oracles of the dead ancient techniques for predicting the future by robert temple i thought this sounded interesting because wow <laughs> because on the back it talks about this so this book um it examines the greek and Mo roman traditions of divination and compares them to those of ancient china so like it t just like compares from all over the world like divination techniques and things like that and i just thought that sounded really interesting to learn about how it differs across the world and how it's similar and now into my fiction books i also got strange to dreamer by laney taylor because i finished this book recently and i fell in love with it and knew that i needed it if you guys haven't heard of this book i'm disappointed i'm going to be having um a review come up of it i filmed one of them but i want to film my spoiler review i just haven't yet so we'll have that coming up this book is amazing and i'm in love with it and you all need to read it. If you want a description of it, you'll have it. You, you can look at the reviews that I'll have up. And then I also got Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Because I've heard a lot about it. And it's a really beautiful cover. And it's the only book I was really interested in buying. When I went and bought all the like the mythology books. I was like, I should get like one YA book. Because that's my main reading thing. Like I'll actually read it right away. So I got Vicious. The book seems really interesting. It's about um, these two guys who have like the ability to do magic or something. Um, like the ability to develop like superpowers basically, and they developed it together. But now they're enemies, and it, like explains why they're enemies and stuff like that. I don't know. I've heard a lot about it. And then today at the flea market, I got. Three Sisters, Three Queens by Philippa Gregory. I really, really loved The Other Bowling Girl, so I've been slowly collecting her novels, even though that's the only one I've read, and I saw this for $2. I'm like, yeah, I gotta get that. There was another one there, but I decided not to get it because there was something I wanted more, and I wanted to stay at $20. So I got this book. I'm not even sure what it's about, actually. So it's when Catherine of Aragon is brought to the Tudor court as a young bride, the oldest princess, Margaret, takes her measure. With one look, each other knows, each knows each other for a rival, an ally upon destined with Margaret's younger sister, Mary, to a unique sisterhood. The three sisters will become the queens of England, Scotland, and France. Oh, that's cool! So they each become separate queens of, like, different... Okay, interesting. And then I got The Nature of the Beast by Lewis Penny. This is about a boy who's always, like, crying wolves on, like, mysterious things happening out in the forest. And then one day he goes missing. And the people, like, in his town are forced to realize that maybe, like, the beasts and things he said in the forest weren't so false afterwards. And so, like, it's an it, uh, it sets off a sequence of events leading to an old crime, an old betrayal, a murder, and an old poet. So it seemed really interesting, and I thought the cover was really, really beautiful. So I thought I'd get it and just see what I like about it, because it's not a YA, and I do really like adult books, and it's the, it really grabbed my eye, so I got it. I got The Closed Casket by Agatha Christie, which is about a wealthy woman who, woman who dies, and she writes her two children out of the will and gives, gives all of her money to someone who's already dying, is like dying in a couple weeks. And then, much like her famous novel, um, which for some reason I can't think of the name of, where like 10 people go to an island and they all die, whatever. So she, in her will, she has um, her two children, some other people, and like some detectives come to like the reading of her will, and it's like she expects someone to be murdered, and it does happen, and they have to discover why, so it's just sounds really interesting and I want to read more of her books because I really like her and then I got The Girl on the Train by Hala, by Paula Hawkins which is beautiful feeling and I got it because I've heard a lot about it and it does seem interesting it's about someone who goes on this train every single day and then one day she sees up something out the window that changes her life forever so it's like a um thriller book so I thought it'd be fun to read and it doesn't seem that long honestly 
but it, it's like a nice feeling book. I can't even describe it, but this book just feels nice to me. It's like the perfect size for a hand. I don't know. It's weird. And then the last book I got, I can't remember where I heard of it, but I heard about it recently, and it just looks really interesting. And it's Year One by Nora Roberts. It's the Chronicles of the One, book one. And I don't completely know what it's about, but I know that I heard a lot about it. So let's just discover. It's about like a disease that breaks out and everything fails and all the order in chaos, it's all like chaos now. But so magic rose up in the place of science and technology, which is really cool. Some good like the witchcraft worked by Lana Bilgram practicing in the loft apartment she shares with her lover. Some of it unimaginably evil that could lurk anywhere around a corner. So, as word spreads that neither the immune nor the gifted are safe from the authorities who patrol the ravaged streets, when with nothing left to count on but each other, Lana and Max make their way out of the wrecked New York City. At the same time, other travelers are heading west, too, into the new frontier. A Czech, a Czech genius named Chuck, who's trying to hack his way through a world gone offline. Alaris, a journalist who lost her audience but uses pen and paper to record the truth. And Fred, her young colleague, possessed of, by, like, some sort of abilities. So that's really cool. Oh, and it keeps going. And Rachel and Jonah, a resourceful doctor and paramedic who fend off despair with her determination to keep a young mother and three infants in their care alive. So it's about a lot of survivors in a, in a, like, a, po like, a post-apocalyptic world and trying to, like, figure, like, there's magic in it. I don't know. It just sounds really good. And I'm totally down to read it. So that is all I got for books this month. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. And tell me down below what some new books you got this month that you're interested in. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye-bye!